Hey there, Scipio here, and if you saw my last video, you know that I did get my ESCs for my 680 Pro Hexacopter build, but they're 40 amp ESCs, and that presents a little bit of a problem just because they're larger than uh, what will fit comfortably underneath the motor mount uh, on this, uh, this particular Hexacopter. So, you know, I mentioned there might be a couple of ways to deal with this problem, uh, including making some mods to the motor mount or making some mods to the ESC. I came up with a solution that I decided I'm going to use, and I thought I would share with you in this quick video uh, what that solution is. So I think it, it'll work. It does not require making any modification to the motor mount. So if I decide I don't like it, I haven't actually compromised anything on the original uh, build. I am making a small modification to the ESC, but it's a modification I was going to make anyway, and that's just extending these motor wires uh, because I need them to run all the way down to the body of the hexacopter, I need to extend them anyway. So there's two ways to extend them. One is to uh, put bullets on and then add extensions. Uh, I don't normally like to do that if I can help it because it just creates another failure point. Uh, and I, so I normally like to uh, extend these by soldering straight to the ESC. In this case, that's required because the method I'm going to use, there's not going to be enough room for those bullets. So I really need to extend them uh, by soldering. So that's really is. I'm just uh, going to solder some longer leads uh, for the motor wires and everything else I'm going to leave alone. Uh, perhaps maybe a little uh, messing around with the shrink tubing and obviously I have to cut the shrink tubing to get the ESCs uh, resoldered. But uh, everything else will be the same. So let me show you how this is going to work out and if you like it, use it. Uh, if you don't like it, don't use it. Uh, there's lots of other options. I've seen some other creative solutions. And, uh, of course, the easy way out is also to just put these on the body and then run the motor wires out to the end of the booms. So, uh, anyway, let's check this out. All right, so the first thing I need to do is figure out how long uh, I need my length to be for the wires that I'm going to run. So, basically, if you imagine, actually, we don't even have to imagine, we'll just do it. If you've got the motor mount uh, mounted on the end of the, uh, of the arm, and you figure the ESC is going to be mounted. I'm going to actually mount it backwards uh, from how it's designed to go. So the motor wires are going to face the outside as opposed to the inside. And I'll show you how that's going to work in a second. So what I need to do is figure out what length I need to make my soldering point run up through the boom and then come down basically uh, on this side of the ESC. And I laid it out, uh, you know, just a, the wire. And it turns out about 16 inches gets me the length I want. I've got some 14 gauge uh, silicone wire here I picked up from Altitude Hobbies. Uh, so I'm gonna cut out 16 inches of this and then this is what I wanna solder uh, onto my ESC. So let me knock that out and then uh, and then I'll be right back with you. All right, so here we go. I've got the uh, 40 amp ESC with now the extended leads for the battery. I haven't even actually prepped this other side yet, just soldered the one side on. When you do this, just be careful. I literally just cut away uh, part of the uh, the shrink wrap that's around it. Now you can cover this up with more shrink wrap or not. I think I'm going to leave it exposed right now. I don't think there's going to be any danger of it touching anything. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and add bullets to these uh, motor leads. And I was originally going to solder the motor leads straight on. That gets complicated, though, because I need to know what order they need to go in for motor direction. Uh, and I decided just to make it simple and, uh, and put some bullets on here. So let me put bullets on here, and then I will have finished this part, and then I can show you how everything starts to go together. All right. So here's my completed ESC. Put my female uh, bullet uh, on the, for the motor leads. Have my 16-inch extended battery wires. And then I also threw in uh, this little servo wire extension, which is what we're going to need to connect to our flight controller. This probably isn't the one I'm going to use. It might not even be long enough, but just for demonstration purposes, since I had it laying around, I'll show you how this whole thing is going to work. So first, let's look at the motor as it's mounted on the carbon fiber little plate, the actual motor mount. This particular motor, I can only mount with two screws, and uh, my motor wires had to come out diagonally uh, and depending on which, you know, holes I used on the motor, they could come out this way, that way, this way, that way. As you'll see here, I have them coming out of the back side. If you look at the, the uh, actual motor mount for the boom, 
that's going to fit just like that. So these motors are pointed backwards towards the uh, the center of the hexacopter. Now, normally you would see these motors point this way and then wrap down inside here, connect into the ESC. ESC battery wires would come through. Um, but I'm doing things a little bit backwards, and uh, I'll show you why. Let me take this motor off here first. So one of the problems with the ESC fitting underneath is the uh, capacitors get in the way. In this case, this ESC has two capacitors. Some of them only have one. This one's got two, and it gets in the way of getting the uh, battery wires into the boom through this little channel here. There's that hole down there. Um, and when you get everything in there, you've got a little extra hanging off the end. Um, and then clearly, there's not enough room. Ideally, you want your motor wires to come up through here, um, but that's not going to work. So, um, you know, one way you could do this is just do it like that, have it hanging off the end just a little bit, and then wrap your motor wires up over the edge of the boom like that. And I'd actually consider doing just that. I mean, that's probably the simplest way. But you'll notice the, the way this is cut out, because it's got that little bit of a, of a peak in it, I can actually fit this in so that the capacitors fit in that uh, area there and it actually gives me a little bit more room. So you can see here, if I open out my uh, shrink wrap from the motor wires, I can press this completely flat, and then this is completely flat inside the motor mount. But then I have to deal with these wires. So this is where I'm getting a little bit creative. So let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm taking the battery leads and actually running them up where normally you would see the motor wires go. From the bottom, let me stick the uh, servo wire in there too. That's got to go with them. Come on, get in there. All right, so I have the battery wires and the ESC wire basically. Uh, running up through that little channel. Now, if I get this thing all pulled down tight, I can set it into place just like that. Motor wires here, coming out uh, towards the boom side, and then the, the positive and negative and the ESC wire are running back up through. Now the next thing I want to do is feed these into where they would normally go from the bottom, I'm just pushing them through from the top. And I probably shouldn't have put this extension on just yet, but we're going to force it. All right. Now, <clears throat> one of the reasons this works is because you've got this plate where the motor goes and it's gonna fit on top. And there's a little bit of room. See, I've almost got exactly enough for this 14 gauge wire to lay flat in there before the, uh, the plate can go on. And I have two screws running down the center of this motor mount, which means as long as I have that center clear, the two screws will help keep the wires from getting near, because uh, this, See, that shaft in there has to rotate, and if something's rubbing up against it, that's going to be a problem. But the way this whole thing works out is those two screws here will create a channel, and that will hold my wires to the outside. So let me try and do this real quick and uh, spread that out just a touch. That's going to go on just like that. I'm going to screw that uh, top plate down where the motor mount is. I've got my negative and positive wire splitting that center along with my servo wire and coming out through the boom which is where I want them. And then the motor wires are the unclean part, right? This is, you know, the downside is, uh, is I've got these. But what I'll do is I'll just solder bullets on here, connect that there, and then just with one zip tie, probably strap that 
motor wire just like that. So from the edge of the boom, it'll look pretty clean. Um, and I'll just have uh, this connection point here. So uh, let me go a little bit further and uh, we'll, uh, we'll just proceed on with this one arm here. All right, for the zip tie, I'm basically going to take the head of, these are smaller zip ties, take the head, run it up from the bottom. I'm gonna go underneath my wires because I don't really want to zip tie those in. They'll be held in just fine with the pressure from the top plate. Wrap that back around, come around to the front, and then these are just barely big enough to latch on. I'm going to get that head off to one side just like that and uh, cinch that down. doesn't have to be super tight, just hand cinch it, and then you can snip off the excess. So that's zip tied on. And you can see now how that's looking a little bit protected. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, as flat as we can get it against that bottom. And then now what I want to do is run all this through the boom. So I'm just going to mock this up for now. I'll uh, finish this off later. I've got to, you know, finish the ends on that. But I just kind of want to show you how it's all going to go together. All right, so I've slipped the wires through my boom all the way down, and you can see where they come out right here. Now, I've got a little bit of extra length, but my positive is going to go here. My negative is going to go here. Solder straight onto the PCB. Got plenty of room for swivel. And then my ESC wire is coming out here. And I'm not going to lie to you, getting it through here is a little bit tough. Um, I taped a string on to help me guide through here. One of the challenges is you've got a screw here uh, that holds this cap on, right, that uh, goes through the post. So you may find you, you might want to pull, try and pull this screw out to get everything through, but I got it through just fine. I just had to finagle it. One of the things that made it easy is leaving the motor off just, you know, right now so I can kind of work this and kind of push them through like that. But once you get everything down, uh, we can go ahead and actually push our motor mount onto here. So I haven't yet trimmed these motor wires yet. That's going to go just like that. It's going to compression in right there, and then just right through the top here, and screw in. Now, now you're going to want to use, when you're doing final assembly, you're going to want to make sure you have thread lock on these screws. All right, again, just a mock-up for you, but you can see how this whole assembly is going together. And again, I'm just going to put some bullets on here, and then once I figure out what length I want these motorized, probably something like that, I'll just take one zip tie and then clamp it on just like that. So that is my method for getting these larger 40-amp ESCs underneath the motor mounts on the Taro 680 Pro. If you find you like this idea, feel free to use it. Um, if you like another idea, uh, go for it. But uh, this is pretty easy, I think, uh, given the options. Uh, didn't require any dremeling, just a little bit of soldering. But either way, this gets me where I want to be, so I'm going to do this for all of my motor mounts. So I've got five more to go, and then I'll start buttoning this thing down. And then I'll be giving you some more detailed build videos, such as the build video for, uh, for this part of the body. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think, but uh, I'll go through to make sure I give you any tips that I found along the way. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.